Welcome back class, I'm Mr. Beth, and this is Meme Street, in which we examine an important historical event using the internet's greatest resource, meme videos and other funny clips. Today's topic, Texas Independence and the Mexican-American War. So it's the early 1800s and Texas is still a part of Mexico, which is actually still a part of Spain. Problem is no one lives there. So in order to promote growth, the Spanish government starts offering huge tracts of lands to empresarios or people that would bring settlers in. The American Moses Austin saw this as a great deal because hey, it's free real estate. Two problems though, Moses dies and Mexico becomes an independent country. But Moses' son, Stephen Austin, gets the okay from the new Mexican government to start a colony and brings in 300 families. Now yeah, there are rules that these settlers have to abide by, like uh, learn Spanish, become Mexican citizens, become Catholics. Still not the weirdest rules I've ever heard of. No pomegranates! No, 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 no pomegranates! Say it. And Texans really didn't follow the rules anyway. Now, Mexico had made this offer to the entire world, but it was pretty much just Americans that were coming in, and in greater numbers. So in 1830, the Mexican government officially shut down all immigration from the United States into Mexico. This sounds weirdly familiar to me. Really strong. Number one, I'm building a wall. They're not coming in anymore. Number two, immediately we get, we're building a wall. And the Texans were mad. There were already rumblings for independence and this just made things worse. Trade with the US plummeted, Texans couldn't even get their family members over, but you know what? If you don't like the rules, then maybe you shouldn't be living here! Well, that's easily fixed. So Stephen Austin meets with General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana to discuss maybe making Texas its own state and is immediately shut down. He sends word back to Texas that maybe we should start planning for an independence movement but is arrested when that message is somehow intercepted. And they were roommates. Oh my god, they were roommates. To make matters worse, Santa Ana declares himself dictator of Mexico and throws out the Mexican constitution. Austin gets out of jail, but at this point he is convinced war is unavoidable. Uh, Tina, you're kind of headed toward the only other car in the lot. You have plenty of time to turn, Tina, so just go ahead, turn one way or the other. You're just swerving back and forth. Turn one way and stick with it, Tina. Tina, for the love of God, turn away or stop! The brakes, Tina, on the left, you're about to hit that car, the brakes, hit the brakes! Ah. Oh my God, it's bad. By October 1835, Santa Ana had sent soldiers into Texas to put down any rebels. And the first actual fight takes place in the town of Gonzales, where the Mexican soldiers were supposed to take a Texas held cannon. The Texans mockingly adorned it with a flag that said, come and take it. So after that, Texans, calling on a diverse group of volunteers, defeated a much larger Mexican force in San Antonio. But the following year, Santa Ana and his men surrounded a small group of Texans in the San Antonio-based mission called the Alamo. And they were in a real pickle because while they did have cannons, they had no gunpowder. Wait, did they, did they check the basement? <laughs> Twelve days went by while heroes like William Travis, Davy Crockett, and Jim Bowie fought off onslaught after onslaught. Finally, the Mexican cannons blew through the wall and the Texans were no match for their overpowering attack. <laughs> And while all of this was going on, Texan leaders were meeting in the town of Washington on the Brazos, where they drafted a new constitution and declared independence on March 2nd. The Republic of Texas is born. Hey, Patrick, what am I now? Uh, stupid? No, I'm Texas. I think I lost my Texan audience with that one. Sam Houston was chosen to lead and one of his first decisions was to have his troops retreat from their position in Goliad to go protect more important forts. Unfortunately, while retreating, they were captured by the Mexicans and executed in what's called the Goliad Massacre. Not a great start for the new country. <laughs> Are you okay, honey? 
But things would turn around quickly the next month in April in San Juancito where Houston and an army of about 900 would surprise attack 1,300 Mexicans led by Santa Ana screaming, remember the Alamo, remember Goliad. I remember when, I remember, I remember. And the Texans would defeat the Mexicans and capture Santa Ana, who would sign a treaty on May 14, 1836 that recognized Texas as a free and independent country, which apparently they didn't want to be because they would ask the US to annex them a few months later. And President Jackson said, nope, as this would upset that whole free and slave state balance. And effectively, Texas was left out in the cold. La 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 la, la 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 la. Hello, darkness, my old friend. By 1845, though, Manifest Destiny was all the rave. America, under newly elected President James K. Polk, wanted Texas and Oregon and basically everything. So Texas is annexed in 45, but there's just so much land west to it. I mean, there's California and New Mexico. Yeah, this was basically our foreign policy in the 1840s. Excuse me. I need all the subway cookies. I need all the subway cookies. Hold on, hold on. And Mexico owned like all of that land. If only there was a way to provoke them into a war for this. I know, let's send our troops down to that disputed Texas-Mexican border. Mexico will almost assuredly attack. We just have to wait for it. Some. Told me. There it is. Now the plan was simple. First, drive Mexican forces out of disputed territory. Second, grab New Mexico and California. And lastly, take Mexico City. Step one and two were accomplished relatively easy, especially since there was already the bear flag revolt against Mexico in California. By the way, they chose to put the bear on their flag because of its ferocious and intimidating nature. <laughs> <laughs> General Winfield Scott and his forces would make their way to Mexico City, capturing it in September 1847, and the Mexican government surrendered. The Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo would make the Rio Grande the official Texas-Mexico border, the Mexican Cession would give us tons of land on the cheap, and with the Gadsden Purchase, Manifest Destiny would be complete. Now we just have to take all that land, turn it into states, and come up with logical names for them. So I am confusion. Why is this one Kansas, but this one is not Arkansas? America, explain! Explain! What do you mean in Arkansas? What so that's the meme story of Texas independence and the Mexican-American War. And this video was brought to you by you. More specifically, those of you that support Mr. Betts Class on Patreon. There you can make a pledge to Mr. Betts Class to help me buy new equipment, new costumes, and just make sure that these videos remain free for everyone forever, all while earning awesome perks. Click here for more information. And if you laughed or if you learned, make sure you click that like button and let me know in the comments what topics or memes you'd like to see in a future video. Make sure you subscribe because it's a long school year, but we're gonna get through it together be safe, and I'll see you next time.